In the last video, we were talking about how we can be prepared for launching an app with apps optimization in the Apple App Store. But in this video, I'm introducing my friend Mark. Um, he's he's the CMO from that startup, and uh, yeah, we were just we've just been in a conversation, and I was like, well, why why shouldn't we record that for you to also get insights into um, yeah into your questions and exactly. my answers. So uh, at first we talked about the low competition state, and so we actually want to rank for the app if we a new app with a low amount of traffic, for example. Um, you told me that we should search for keywords with low competition actually to rank higher. That's like totally normal. Also, if you want to, to like rank with Google AdWords and whole stuff. But what about the um, the growth, for example, like Headspace, really huge app, ranks actually for meditation. Yeah. Like, should we also try to rank for those keywords at the beginning or will we change in the future? Like, how can we move on to those big keywords actually? Yeah, yeah, that's a very good question. Um, you have to be aware that Headspace has a lot of traffic. Yeah, Headspace figured it's a game out and they have been one of the first apps in, the, in that space. Um, so, targeting. You, you know probably the difference between short head and long tail keywords, yeah, right? Yeah. So that short head is something like meditation, yeah. and um, a long tail would be meditation journey free, or something like that. And the best thing you can do, if you have low budget, if you have a low, um, low kind of resource for your marketing, is target long tail keywords. So um, in the Google Play Store, the Apple App Store, um, the free first search results get most of the traffic, approximately 60% of all the traffic. So with search ads um, in Google Play and Apple App Store, you can imagine that uh, even if you are in the top three, you still don't get like the big chunk of traffic that you would like to get. So for, for you to begin with, I would go for keywords that you see in, in your tool, okay, they have low competition, medium competition, we could try to go for that, yeah. that you have a high probability to get into the top 10 for. Yeah. If you see 5,000 um, competitors, um, popularity score is decent, but you see yourself starting, I wouldn't target that keyword at all. Okay. At least in the starting phase. Understood. Like, and, and in the growth stage afterwards, um, will we change the keywords actually? Or for example, that's why I imagine right now, um, using like long form keywords, which would mean like to also include um, the short term keyword. For example, if you want to rank in long term for meditation, it would be like useful to try out the long term keyword with uh, meditation and for example, better meditation for free or something like this, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, so I would differ between having uh, a short head keyword that you would like to rank for and something like your brand positioning. Yeah. Because it sounds you want to compete in an area where headspace is the leader. I mean, it's, a, it's actually like in, in general, if we're in the health and fitness category, like the most important keywords are actually, for example, health and fitness. And of course, if we're in the category, we also want to rank the future for health and fitness. Also, if it's not like specifically um, what the app is about, because the app is more about journaling. Yeah. But it's still referred like really big to health and fitness. I would, I would go a different route uh, on um, if I would be in your shoes, yeah. I would go for even if journaling is a, is a market where you already have um, maybe just competitors that are yeah, they doing a good job. Yeah. I would go for on, on the one side for indie developers that have decent traffic, but you are like asking yourself how can they possibly get any traffic? Like the app looks like crap. Yeah. So I would analyze those guys and see what are they ranking for, what, what kind of long tail keywords do they rank for. Okay. Um, and then you can basically piggyback their traffic. That's a very powerful uh, strategy that I also use for my fitness. So like more competing with the smaller guys, yes. you can like outperform actually. Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, uh, take those as your competitors that you can actually beat. Yeah. Don't go into battle with like, That's the big ones. Um, like, and what about the point of changing the keywords? Do we change the keywords at any point, like in the future? Or not? Yeah, ask, ask yourself, uh, when you're um, ranking for a set of keywords yeah. and you aren't in the top 10 for them, yeah. but you start investing into Facebook um, ads, you start investing into Instagram,
Instagram and you see your daily downloads increase, what would you do in order to, to optimize your potential to be found? Like if I, if I spend money on ads, but I can't go to the top 10, yeah. then I would change the keywords actually right? to, to, to come over there. Yeah. And, and this is exactly what you can do, yeah. um, because when, when we think about the basic, like Google and Apple state themselves that the traffic, most of the traffic is coming from search, 50, uh, 50%. And 50% of that is brand keyword, like people searching for Headspace or for Calm or whatever. But um, the other 25% is long tail keywords and shortcut keywords, like functional keywords. And um, so it, me it means it's a big chunk of traffic that you can get hold on. And even like, I would be extra aware when you're spending money because then your likelihood to rank for a keyword is much higher than if you have no traffic at all. Yeah. So changing your keywords frequently, just for you as the CMO, having an eye on your ASO tool weekly um, or even like bi-weekly, something like that. But just keeping an eye on because it's it's like your it's your landing page. It's your landing page and it's it's, it's kind of like where your app is living. And yeah, they told me you have to change it like constantly look at the on the metrics and then like adapt to the, to the like, what's happening out there. At one point, uh, I would like to point out like just kind of talk to you like I've really much experience like really really much experience in all areas actually offline marketing, online marketing, selling digital products. Like the brand, brand awareness, like reaching more people and really putting the brand in their mind. Um, but ASO, just to point that out, ASO is a really underrated topic in my opinion. Because like, also if I have so much experience in different areas, that's the first time I'm really like, okay, I uh, need another expert for that, that's why I'm asking you. And really that's the first time I'm asking another person for that. Um, and that's why, like for, for me, example, for my example, I actually consider to hire you as a like A's or as good to, to, to That's great to hear. Yeah, to, to recommend. That's <laughs> just to point pointing that out because I'm I mean to to get to know everything in the ASO space like in a short amount of time I think uh, will be made more efficient to work with that because like uh, Yeah, uh, that's that's great for you to say. Um, but I would like to point out one thing. Yeah. You it still is, have to know what's going on. Of course, but it's underestimated in, in, in the um, app space in general. Meaning, if people are doing it, they, they are outsourcing it, so they don't have the mindset. Yeah. So it's your chance yeah. to get through the clutter and then yeah, position your app. Like, just in general, how do you see the uh, ranking market actually? Like, I mean, for example, Facebook, Google AdWords, all the stuff, like, so much competition, so many people, so many marketers, you know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but in how's it like how's it in the ASO market actually? Like are there a lot of apps who really specifically want to rank or do they actually do something about it or do we have like um, an advantage like you know in, in the competition like now in this, in this moment? Yeah. So um, what you have in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store is a certain semantic component. Yeah. So you will also rank if you don't necessarily know what you're doing. Yeah. Because the Apple App Store sees meditation yeah. and then yeah. they're like, ah, yeah. you should rank for that yeah. toward these keywords. And that's rather the case. Mm -hmm. So you have um, you have competition, yeah. of course. Um, you have to find you like your your niche and then where you can break through. Yeah. Um, and uh, if you are optimizing, like if you were uh, really thinking, okay, should I put that title into into my uh, uh, this keyword into my title, yeah. and can I then rank higher than that that competitor? If you're doing it with that mindset, about, yeah. you are already ahead of many apps. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Okay, awesome. Yeah, man. Thanks for your time. Like, uh, no problem, Mark. I hope it uh, helped really you a little bit. Really and then, yeah. Um, see you in the next video.